So uh, tell me a little bit about high school. How was high school for you? High school was smooth. High school was smooth. Um, I had really all the rat. Uh, I had went, when I was going to L.A. for to play AAU throughout the, uh, the, the my younger days. I had made a L.A. is more of the basketball mecca on this side of the coast. So my name started to ring bells in Arizona as far as I was the next up up and coming youngster to be uh, one of the best in the state. So by the time I got to high school, I already had a little bit of recognition. I was already kind of ranked top five in my class as far as uh, basketball prospects. I played varsity as a freshman. Um, I got all state as a freshman, um, player of my region as a freshman. I averaged 20 points a game as a freshman. So then I played AAU again, came back, same thing, sophomore year. Then I was all state again. Um, then this year, this time I was a Mr. Basketball, uh, averaged 30 a game as a sophomore. And then actually from that standpoint, a coach that had actually started up the Compton Magic from Phoenix that had went to Phoenix to L.A. to help start the Compton Magic had now gotten a uh, college assistant job at Oregon State with um, Michelle Obama's brother was there, Craig Robinson. So it made sense at the time for me to commit to Oregon State Beavers. It was a Pac-12 school. Um, I knew they had no recruits coming in at my position. A couple of more older Compton Magic cats, one Roberto Nelson, who Joe Burden. They were two two years older than me. They had just enrolled at Oregon State, so I was going to be playing with a fellow Compton Magic alum. So the situation seemed right, so I had basically just committed to Oregon State. Craig Robinson was uh, he's Michelle Obama's brother. Um, you know, my mom is huge as far as, you know, in the, in, in the Pan-Africanism um, culture, the NAACP culture, so... Her and Craig Robinson had gotten really close. She was looking forward to meeting the, the, the Obamas. You know, I was going to be historic as far as not just for me, but for my family. So that was a situation I just had had decided to go in and committed to Oregon State after my sophomore season. I played my whole sophomore season, um, committed to Oregon State. S- sophomore summer, going into junior summer, uh, committed to Oregon State. And then I started to grow a little bit from about 5'7", about 5'10". Um, game started to develop and then I was getting more recognition, more recruiting and then um, I played my whole junior year, committed to Oregon State still, I got Mr. Basketball again, I transferred schools at that time because when I committed to Oregon State, the school that I was in was closer more to my neighborhood that I grew up in, more in the hood more black kids Um, you know, it comes with a little bit more jealousy you know what I mean, when you're doing something a little bit better than other kids in your area and they come from what you come from. You know, it's typical kid, teenager shit when you're trying to find your identity as a as a young man. And kids that I grew up with were confused why I was getting this recognition and why I was able to go to California and not even practice and play with the top AAU team in the country. And why they felt like I was, you know, leaving them out in a sense. So I ended up transferring schools because I wasn't having any more. My coach was kind of like trying to pull my rank and pull my rings in and let other kids um, do it do what I was doing when I was the best on the team. You feel what I'm saying? It, was, it wasn't it was no favoritism supposed to be going on, but if it's the last shot at the game, I should be taking the shot. You feel me? He had other kids taking the shot. And my parents were both, um, you know, they, they basketball players. They're like, no, he, 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 he don't know what he's doing. He ain't going to help your development. So I went to another school that was in more of a predominantly white area in, in, in Phoenix, Arizona, where the team was sponsored by Jordan. The team was going to different type of tournaments around the country. The team had a booster club program for their basketball program. So I ended up transferring there in between my sophomore to junior year. So my junior year, I ended up going to another school called Mesa High and leaving Mountain Point High School, which was closer to my neighborhood that I grew up in. Totally different environment, Mormon white kids. Um, played my whole junior year at Mesa High. Um, all same thing, Mr. Basketball, all state, all Arizona there again. Um, region player of the year, region player first team. Um, and then after that, I decommitted from Oregon State. And um, my recruitment shot up. Boom. Shot up. I went from like 100th in the country to like 30th that fast. Um, Played my final season uh, 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 with Compton Magic. That's when I got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of. That's when they, they showcased the surround. I had Isaiah Austin on my team. I'm not sure if you're familiar with with him. Gabe York, um, my man Norvell Pell. He was just with the Sixers. We had a loaded squad. We had a loaded squad. We was top five in the country for 
for AAU and I showcase, I murdered, I murdered the scene. I murdered the scene. I got invited to all the USA's, the LeBron's, they call it, the Nike top 100 is now the LeBron because they eliminated shoot, shoot, uh, shoot companies from being involved in any type of high school basketball camp. So the LeBron was the Nike all American then before you go to LeBron, you got the Darren Williams. You know what I mean? The, the point guards go to the Darren Williams, the shooting guards go to the Kobe, the bigs go to the Mari Stoudemire. And then from there, y'all go to LeBron. You know what I mean? Um, I did Adidas Nations, which is used to be the the ABCD camp. I did Adidas Nations that summer as well. I did the Reebok All American as well. I did the NBA Top One Hundred as well. I did the Pangos All American as well. So that whole summer, going into my senior year, I sh oh I did the Adidas Sixty Four for AAU. I did a, I did everything that I could to pump myself up going into my senior year. I got offers from every school in the country, and then um, ending up ending my last year of AAU. I committed to a ASU. My mom had my mom was an uh, Arizona State Sun Sun Devil alumna. Um, James Harden, you know, he's right up the street for me. Went to ASU. They let him play. They let him do his thing. Um, you know, everybody, every great point guard in my city goes to from either Vegas and Phoenix or LA go to U of A. I wanted to try to change the landscape of that and make a name for myself at a different school, and I went to ASU. You know what I'm saying? Committed to ASU, signed my letter of intent to ASU, played my whole senior season at ASU. Uh, uh, senior season, committed to ASU, signed to ASU, where I was Mr. Basketball again. I got Mr. Basketball in Arizona three years in a row. Um, all state three years in a row. All, all state four years in a row. All Arizona four years in a row. So I basically left my mark as far as Arizona high school basketball uh, is considered. I'm uh, I'm like fifth all time in Arizona history scoring. Jared Bayless, Mike Dibby, Corey Hawkins, and then I'm right there um, as far as all-time leading scores. Um, I'm the all-time leading scorer at both high schools that I attended. Um, my jersey is going to be retired at both high schools that I attended here. And, yeah, my Arizona basketball career, I was meaning for it to be a legendary career because I was watching Jared Bayless. That was the last person I had saw before I entered high school. He was a senior when I was in eighth grade. So when he was leaving, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to be what he was in my state. So. I had a very successful and historical uh, high school basketball career in the state of Arizona, man. And I put myself and my city on, on the map and my high school's on the map as far as being a force on the West Coast to reckon with. Nah, you definitely did. You definitely did. So soon soon after, I don't know what year it was in high school, you started getting some baller's life uh, attention. And, right. And what, what was that like? What, what was what was that like, you know, getting that, that extra pub? Right, so that's that that extra, like that extra started, boost on your like name. Grade. Yeah, that's all like tenth grade where Ballers Life. I was there when the Baller before Ballers Life is now. There was no Ballers Life anything, right? Um, I was actually in the first Ballers Life All American game after my senior year, but um, Brandon Jennings and uh was really the first to kind of put that stage out there for the West Coast. So our Compton Magic team was kind of the first team that Baller's Life was following because our AAU team was fully sponsored and he was allowed to basically travel with us. His name, his name's Brad. Matter of fact, Brad is the first Baller's Life. He probably still owns Baller's Life though, but he would travel with us and he would just get a whole like documentaries and stuff of us. And it, it put, it put me out there, put me out there, put Gabe York out there, Isaiah Austin out there. And we were able to be able to be showcased. And that's when, uh, Nick Johnson and uh, the, the Bay Area's finest with the Oakland Soldiers was coming about. So it was kind of like a rivalry thing, who mixtape and Baller's Life. So it was different, man. It was different, you know what I mean, uh, getting all those highlights and videos because they were at every tournament, you feel me? So I, they were getting everything that I did, you know what I mean, everything that I did. And that really helps your ranking as well. That really helps your recruiting as well because when you're – nowadays they got the, NI, the NIL. So nowadays these Baller's Life and Hoop mixtapes views – can actually get your recruiting up because nowadays it's about putting putting asses in them seats. You know what I mean? It used to be about winning games. It's about both now. So that really put me on a different tra trajectory because having 900,000 views off of one video in high school, you know what I mean, does something to you for sure. But it was different for sure. It was different for sure, man. It was different. It was able to get me recognition that I never even thought I would get. That's a fact, bro. That's a fact. 